Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about things that are overpriced and you do not need for your home because I am over it, I'm sick of seeing it and we're gonna get into it. The first thing that's overpriced but I see everywhere and you do not need in your home is designer soap. As long as you are washing your hands and the soap is getting a your hands clean, what difference does it make where it is from or what label is on it, what brand it is? I'm not impressed by designer soap. I don't care if you spent 40, 50, 60, I have seen $80 soap before, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's literally soap. I would be more impressed if I go and wash my hands at your home and I have like a gorgeous scent on the soap and I say, oh, where'd you get this from? And say, you know what? There's this great shop down the street. Somebody, she runs it. She makes all of her own soap. That's impressive to me, supporting small businesses, getting something unique, interesting, having your own scent made for your soap. If you want to buy expensive soap, that's the thing to do. Support a small business, have soap that's handmade. That's better than like designer soap. And let me tell you what, the thing about designer, okay, unless it's got, you know, like a major brand name on it that we all know and recognize, nobody knows what it is and nobody cares either. Okay, literally that's the truth. Nobody cares about what designer soap you're using. It does it smell good, great, that's wonderful. But at the same time, like, I don't need to spend $50 on a bottle of soap because I wash my hands regularly, apparently unlike some people. So I go through soap pretty quickly. So what are you gonna do? Buy a $40 bottle of soap every month to replace? Not really the most sustainable way to go about purchasing soap, I don't know. And let me tell you what, I could buy soap for every sink in my house and an extra bottle for less than the cost of one designer bottle of soap. A lot of people are also very scent sensitive and they're sensitive to the scent, the chemicals in soap. So I would much rather find something that gets my hands nice and clean, has a light and soft fragrance, but is a little bit more organic or is made using natural materials. That's a much better way to go about getting something that's great, effective, efficient next to your sink instead of buying designer soap. Also, let's not forget about the fact that you can get your own soap dispenser that goes with your decor, your aesthetic is beautiful, but you can refill and put whatever soap you want into. So you really don't have to spend an arm and a leg on designer soap. I know you see it on social media. It can kind of be a little bit of like a pressure situation. You're like, is it really that great? Is it worth it? Should I try it? I'm not buying $40, $50 soap. I'm not doing it. I don't care. I'm not spending that much money on soap because it's literally soap. Do you know what I see all of the time that makes me think, gosh, that must be really expensive to upkeep and maintain in your home? Fruit as decor. Fruit as decor, you know, it's like someone's kitchen on their island, they have a big bowl full of lemons and it's like 50 lemons in this bowl. And I'm like, are, what are you doing with the lemons? Like, are you really going through that many lemons? Are you eating them like apples or something? You know, it doesn't make sense to me and it seems very expensive because I know the fruit isn't lasting you that entire time. And it's one thing if you've got, oh, we have some oranges and some apples and some bananas and you eat them and you go through them and it's like, okay, it's cool, it's there, it's out there. But if you're just buying aesthetic fruit, for the sake of it looking good. I'm a little like, hmm, on that front. Plus I prefer my fruit in the refrigerator. I like it to be cold. So I'm not really the biggest fan of like a, a room temperature fruit, but that might just be me. I don't really understand fruit as decor, but I can admit that it looks good. Like let's take lemons for example, okay? We love a pop of yellow, a really saturated tone I think is gorgeous. But instead of getting a bowl of lemons that you're not going to use or eat, look for a ceramic piece. You could get an actual lemon tree. It doesn't have to be a big one. You can get a little baby lemon tree that has some lemons on it and you get that pop of color. You get some green, some foliage, a little nature. And I think that's fantastic also. But let's not also write off the fact that you could literally just get fake fruit. There is like hyper realistic fake fruit. I found a seller, I'm gonna link below for you, of these lemons are hyper realistic. They're made for like photography and magazines and for staging, but they're fake lemons. Not saying I think everybody needs to have fake fruit in their home, but like that's so much better than wasting money on getting fruit that you're not planning on eating just for the sake of decor. And listen, I think we can all agree that wasting food is not something anybody should be doing. So you do not have to buy fruit for the sake of decor. I'd much rather see you buy flowers, go to a local farmer's market, support a small business, get some flowers from them and boom, there you go. You have that like fresh moment in the kitchen that's bringing a little pop of color, great move them around your house everywhere, that's wonderful. But like, do we have to have fruit as decor? 
I don't think so. I don't think food is really the answer to that. But like I said, if you like it, there are alternatives out there that can get you that same look without you having to like go through and throw out a bunch of fruit every week, every month or whatever, especially if you're not planning on eating it. Now, if you go through lemons like that, all, all, I'm all for it, go for it, you know what I mean? But if you don't, there's no point in having it, so look for an alternative. Now, I think wasting food is not a good thing, but what also is a waste, certainly a waste of money, is flat pack furniture. We see it all the time, we see it everywhere. I constantly see videos about like, what to buy from here, what to buy from there. And like, that's all cool and fun and everything. I get being on a budget and looking for affordable alternatives, but let me tell you what, flat pack furniture, is not actually that cheap. Neither is furniture that you would get from like a home decor store or like, you know, a grocery store with a furniture section or a home decor section. It's really not that cheap. But when you look at the quality, it's extremely overpriced. Particle board or, you know, soft woods. You look at these pieces and it's like, they're already damaged on the floor, the sales floor, and they're sitting there and it's like, why would I buy that? It's no good. I see influencers all the time who will get, you know, like this great piece and be like, oh, you have to have it. Look at it, it's so amazing, it's beautiful. And it is beautiful, but it doesn't have the quality to be durable and have longevity in their home. So it's like, yeah, okay, we see it now. We see it for two or three months and then it's gone and it's, rotting in some landfill, because let me tell you what, I think that if somebody has to go to a charity shop that you're planning on donating this to, they deserve something better than some banged up, bad quality damaged furniture. So I would say steer clear of it and look at the price tag. Like, you know, a pair of nightstands, you might find them and they might be like 120 or $150 each flat pack. Well, that's $300 for a pair of nightstands. You could go onto a marketplace site. You could go to a flea market. You could go to a vintage shop and find nightstands that are way better quality for less or the same amount of money. And you have something that's like actually solid wood that doesn't require any assembly. They're nightstands, they're not big. You could probably put them in any size car. That's a much better way to shop and save money and get better quality. And you might not even be saving money, let's be real. Like vintage is not cheap sometimes. Like you can buy something that's really expensive that's vintage, but you're getting your values worth because you're getting better quality. You might be paying a little bit more for it, but you're still spending money on bad quality furniture that's not really any good that's gonna last a year or two. Now, vintage does not have to mean used, old. It doesn't have to mean it's any specific style. There's great traditional furniture, but there's such amazing contemporary, modern, postmodern, mid-century, Danish modern furniture out there on these marketplace sites that you can go to and find and it's, it fits any style. And I think that's amazing. Also, uh, I see all of the time, all of the time, luxury designer furniture, custom made, cost thousands of dollars on the resale market for you know maybe one or two thousand dollars or a couple hundred or some people just don't know what they have and they're like oh you know i just want it gone come get it like i see that all of the time all of the time and you can get such amazing things that are not just from some generic store let's be real that's what it is this furniture for the quality is overpriced. It looks cheap now, but when you have to replace it and spend the equivalent amount of money or double or triple that to get something better, it's not any cheaper, it's overpriced, you're not saving any money, you're costing yourself extra. Listen, you know, I'm not the person that I'm just gonna sell you any generic stuff that I don't believe in. If I show it to you, I genuinely use it, I believe in it, I believe in good quality. And if you are that same person, please take a moment, hit the subscribe button, join us, become a part of the La Chic family, and give this video a like. I really appreciate it and it helps us out a lot. Subscribing helps us out a lot, but what does not help anyone is buying overpriced things. And one of the most popular things right now, one of the biggest trends that is overpriced that I'm sharing with you right now are paper light fixtures. They look beautiful. I will give them that, okay? Like, you know, I'm gonna tell you like it is. I'm gonna tell you the truth. They look beautiful, gorgeous. I love it, the glow, the moodiness of the light, but it's literally paper. It is paper. Paper is not expensive. So why are these light fixtures so expensive? I do not understand it. These light fixtures can be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. They look beautiful, but it's literally paper. It's just paper. Maybe there's like a wood or a wire in through it to give it shape. It's just paper. 
there is nothing more overpriced that I can say in this video. Like it's literally paper, paper light fixtures. Why are they costing so much money? Why are they selling for such a huge premium? There is great design. There's great design, but we also see like people be like, oh, it's so amazing. There's a dupe of it here. Of course there's a dupe of it. It's paper. Of course it's cheaper. It's just paper. And I know I'm going on saying it's paper, it's paper, it's paper, but like, how else can I explain it to you that you do not need to spend a ton of money on paper? I bought a pack of it at the grocery store the other day for my printer and it cost me $2. Why are light fixtures hundreds of dollars that are made of it? It makes no sense to me. I think they look beautiful and there are more affordable alternatives than buying a designer or expensive paper light fixture. You can get an affordable one. Literally go on some of these sites and look for them. Google paper light fixtures and you're gonna see a ton of them that are gorgeous but that are not expensive because they don't have to be, they shouldn't be because the material is not there. And I'm not saying anything about craftsmanship or design or quality. I think that's all there and maybe you pay a little more for something like that that's really amazing. But at the end of the day, it's just a paper light fixture. It should not be massively expensive. It's not gold, it's not brass, it's not iron, it's paper. You know, I love vintage, I love sourcing, I love finding antiques, I love collecting. And something I'm always looking for, of course, is decor. I love vintage decor. I think it brings character, personality, I think you find one-offs or really unique pieces, and I think that's amazing. But what I think is overpriced is going to box stores and buying decor, because it's usually the same cost or more than what the same thing vintage would be. Literally go to a flea market and look at some of the things. People will put out things that look like garbage, okay, that they think are garbage, but it looks exactly like what's the new thing at some box store. And, and they'll price it like it's like $5 and it'll be $60 at some other store. I can't, I cannot because buying new decor is fine. We all like new things, not everybody likes vintage, okay? I get it, I respect it. I have a mix of things in my home. I'll buy something brand new, I'll buy something vintage, I'll put the two of them together, and that's great. I think it builds character, personality into a space. That's fine. You don't have to go that route, but do not overpay for something that is fake vintage, that looks vintage, but is at some box store, because you literally could get the same thing that's actually vintage for less. Everybody else has it. They can go to the store and get it. And I can't tell you the number of people online I see that are like, oh my goodness, I just got this. It's so amazing. It's so beautiful. It's wonderful. You absolutely have to get it now before it sells out. If something is going to sell out quickly, you don't need to buy it because it means everybody else already has it. Why do you want the same thing as everyone else? I wanna see what you are. I wanna see what represents you. When I go into your house, I don't wanna see what the latest thing from whatever store or collection is. That's the thing, that's it. What is great interior design? You ask me about all the time. Great design is about walking into your house and learning about who you are, being intrigued by the person you are, and having a space that's curated around you as a person, not just what's available right now in a store. Now that we have talked about some overpriced things you don't need, let's talk about some luxury home features that just don't look good. Be sure you check out this video right here to learn all about it, and I will see you over there. <laughs>